Abraham for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, everybody. We'll start with our introductions. I've got Sapphire Rhodes, our Assistant General Manager, to the left. I'm Jerry Mufo, your General Manager. We also have Lynn Tabernetti, Board President, Jerry Monahan, Board Director, Fred Weck, Board Secretary, Claudine Diaz, our CFO. We also have Tad Creasy, First Service Regional Manager, Nelly Alcacer, who is our uh, Operations Coordinator, congratulations, and Cindy Graves, our Activities Director. So we do have a quorum. All right, let's start with a, a few announcements. The first one is we did receive a letter from k Manian that RJ Hernandez has uh, separated from k Manian and Jason Mock will be appointed in his position as a declarant board member. Second is age verification. I am pleased to announce that we have over 94% of our community responding to the age verification form. We have 110, thank you. We have 110 more responses to receive for 100% of cooperation. So we'll continue to, to speak with those uh, 110 residents and get them to submit their forms. Second is uh, Phase B and C street sealing. The board had approved having those streets uh, seal coded. Uh, we are working with KHOP Manian and the City of Beaumont. There are a number of areas that still have not completed uh, acceptance by the city inspectors. And we would prefer seal coating after any repairs are done. So uh, we did put this project on hold pending those repairs being completed by k Manium. Open house signs. I know that we've had uh, a couple of open houses over the last uh, few weekends. I just want to remind everybody, and I'm going to read from the sign guideline, from the community guidelines. It, it, it states, one for sale sign, 18 by 24 inches or smaller, displayed on the inside of the front window or in the front planter bed, and on open house days, one open house sign of the same dimensions and one directional sign, 18 by 24 inches or smaller, may be displayed in the common area. Please notify the management office with the directional sign location. I want to make sure everybody understands that the open house signs are not allowed to be placed in the uh, entries of our community or in the main traffic circle. And we're trying to make sure we keep all the for sale signs out of our main entry areas. So um, as I note them and as often as we can, we do pull those signs from the, the common areas. Uh, and co uh, communicate with those realtors as far as what our rules allow. Okay, next announcement is regarding parking. And I've received numerous um, communications from our residents as well as notice noticing it myself. Uh, our parking lot started looking like a KOA. And I'm sure you all agree that we do not want the vision of our community to look like a campground. So we are definitely um, strictly enforcing the parking rule when it comes to recreational vehicles. And just a reminder that in the rules, uh, parking page 21, item eight and nine, just wanna make a couple of points. One is that uh, recreational vehicles, which include motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth wheels, pickups with campers or tent trailers, are allowed to park on association streets directly in front of your home. And that is for a 24 hour period. So that means you can roll them in and pack them up and then roll them out the next day. And then when you return from your trip, roll them in and load, clean up, and then take them back to the storage facility. The uh, guests may park recreational vehicles in the designated area of the large parking lot. So it's for guests only, not for resident parking. 
So we want to encourage the residents to please utilize the front of their home when possible. All right. I think that's great. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with our homeowner form. And we'll start with Martha Baumgarten. Thank you for the opportunity to share about two separate subjects. I'm probably going to need my full three minutes, so somebody gong me if I go over. Firstly, I have a personal uh, expression of gratitude. In May, we hosted a wedding reception here at Four Seasons, and our son Josh and his new bride, Adriana. On behalf of Josh and Adriana, Carlos and myself, I feel compelled to recognize the outstanding experience provided by the Four Seasons staff. This room proved to be the perfect setting for the festivities, and I'm sure many of our guests wondered if they were okay with Canadian's Four Seasons or at the Four Seasons. Um, it was amazing. Rarely do our staffers get recognized by name for their efforts, but to overlook them would be unforgivable. Jimmy Vasquez, Ali Vansel, Kelly Norton, Annette Robles, and Joanna Smith, Thank you all for your responsiveness and the joyful outlook you displayed throughout the setup and the breakdown. Cindy, you, Sapphire, Nellie, all played a huge role in setting the stage for success and ensuring that everything went well under the very challenging circumstances of a following renovation. It could not have been better. <clears throat> Danya, she was our liaison at the event. And what can I say but that Danya is amazing and she is now part of our crazy family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody jumped through hoops, went above and beyond. It was amazing. Finally, a big thank you to the board of directors and general manager Jerry Lupo. Your team is remarkable. Thanks to all of you, we have a room full of happy former rangers, fitness gurus, and according to somebody who was here, some of the most beautiful people this side of LA. <laughs> so thank you all. Now to my second item, it just pertains to a request you have in your packets for a new group. To set the stage, I have a very brief little story, one of many that are occurring all around us every day. About three weeks ago, our Four Seasons dog owner group was made aware of an urgent situation in some lakes. This involved a gentleman who was recently widowed. He needed to rehome his two dachshunds to enable his own transition to assisted living. It doesn't get a whole lot sadder than that. The eight-year-old dachshund was adopted, leaving 16-year-old Buddy with an uncertain future. <clears throat> the situation became urgent as the clock ticked. Our friend in Sun Lakes felt there was no option left. If we could not find a home for Buddy within the next 48 hours, he would be euthanized to spare him from going into a shelter. This is not the outcome anybody wants for the human or for the animal. Our rescue friends in Sun Lakes, a Four Seasons resident volunteering for Save a Small Dog Rescue, and the CEO of Join My Help Foundation, right here, Joe Hansen, they combined to make something good happen for this owner and for Buddy. They joined forces to find a soft landing for him and to ensure his grieving owner had the comfort he needed to make his own difficult transition. In a short 24 hours, these groups came together and found Buddy a permanent foster home. Another volunteer transported Buddy to his new home at Canova Park, where we and his former owner received daily updates about how he is thriving. This story perfectly demonstrates the type of work happening all around us to protect pet owners and their companions. This new group proposes to work closely with Four Seasons dog owners and other entities within Four Seasons to build upon this work. Our efforts will include all pets. You have additional details of our intent with our application, and we look forward to sharing more details with our residents. For now, on behalf of all of us who recognize the importance of cherished pets in the lives of our friends and neighbors, we respectfully ask that you approve our request to be a recognized group within four seasons. Thank you. Our next speaker is Patrick Derry. Uh, Patrick Derry, I am captain of the Dog Owners Group. Here you I am Patrick Garrity, captain of the Dog Owners Group. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Martha 
on a, conducting a, success, a successful wedding celebration here. Uh, the second thing is I want to speak to uh, Martha's request. Martha is a member of the Dog Owners Group Steering Committee, and Martha and I have collaborated on expanding uh, our goals and objectives for that group to include a larger range of owners and animals here at Four Seasons. Uh, according to national and state statistics, if we can uh, translate those to Four Seasons, we figure that we have at least 700 uh, dog owners here at uh, Four Seasons. Our uh, group continues to grow on a monthly basis as more and more homes are occupied here. And we thought it was a good idea to include more homeowners and the dog owners group uh, serve as a clearinghouse and an umbrella group for what Martha is, uh, is suggesting. Uh, we feel that we can provide a service, uh, proactive service to our community here in terms of uh, assisting and rounding up stray dogs and stray animals here at Four Seasons, rehoming and finding foster homes for dogs that need that. And um, as our Chairman Lynn suggested a couple of days ago at the Safety Committee, um, our group consists of a lot of dog walkers here, and uh, we have the opportunity to serve as the eyes and the ears of the community as far as those issues that concern pedestrians, such as uneven sidewalks or tree roots that are raising certain sections of the sidewalk, or even uh, sprinkler systems that aren't working properly. So I'm just here to say that the Dog Owners Group uh, is supports of Martha's request, and we hope that you approve it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Wasbottom. Yes, uh, my, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, my wife and I just moved here about eight months ago, and we are very, very happy here. We want to thank the board and all the uh, people who live here for such a beautiful place to live. Thank you, thank you very much. We're very excited about being here. But I do have a question about uh, this new dog park I keep hearing about. I was wondering if you could uh, uh, direct me to someone who could answer my questions, or can you answer my questions? Uh, main, main question is, where is this dog park going to be located? Does, has there been a decision on that yet? We're still looking uh, for places, uh, and when we have something concrete. Uh, well, it, will this go on um, to, to a vote? Or? We will bring uh, our recommendations to the dog owners group. And now, uh, is there any more information you can give me who I would talk to about uh, getting more information? I, 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 it's premature right now. Okay, so, so we don't know who's who's been constructed, who's been paid for, who's going to have keep dinner. All, all of those questions uh, are yet to be uh, answer. Okay. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Marion Loney. Hello. Um, pretty much you answered my question about the RV parking. But the only other question I have is the control of the adherence to the guideline and policy. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion that maybe we move the uh, request for parking to the management office instead of the front desk office in order to get a better control on it. And also in um, the parking under the community guidelines, page 21, section A through A D. Um, it's a total of 96 hours in a 30-day calendar month. So how are we going to control that? That's the only question I have, because you've already answered all the others. Okay, our next speaker is Lynette Simonson.
Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here as a member of the Landscape Committee and no longer a member of the Rules and Regulations Committee and love this beautiful place that we live in. My concern is having served on Rules and Regulations when it was a full committee, uh, full consideration was given to the important uh, issues of our governing uh, body, our HOA Board of Directors, have full consideration for those items of great importance. Uh, and uh, the kinds of things like term limits and how many members of the actual board should be working best in our community, I feel concerned that perhaps not enough consideration was given to those two issues. When I was on the Rules and Reg, we did do full consideration to the idea of a five-member uh, board of directors uh, for all the reasons that living in a 55 and over community uh, has uh, with those issues that concern each of us personally. And um, that's my big, big, big worry and that uh, at the time we didn't consider term limits when I was on the rules and regulations, but the uh, family situation and, and health situations uh, have such an impact on committee members and not having a full committee on rules and regulations, I, I, I question how that those important items would be fulfilled and discussed for the board's consideration. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jackie Sneddon. Good afternoon. Um, I came here wanting to speak on one of the agenda items, item number 14E, regarding term limits for the board. <coughs> I'm somewhat wondering why this issue is actually coming up. There seems to be no support for this kind of change in our community. Right now you have 11, actually 12 committees, and they're not even fulfilled. Even trying to find people to fill the slots on our committees is becoming a very difficult endeavor. I wonder why it's even being considered for the board of directors. Right now, there are only five of you. At some point in time, there will be seven. I think the problem that we're going to face is not that someone's going to be on the committee or on the board too long, but that we're actually going to have people that are going to want to serve. This seems to be an issue with committees. It was an issue with the district delegates, and their only, only real uh, duty was to bring the vote at the general meeting and still having difficulty. This is a volunteer position. I'm also concerned that this is being brought forward by the Rules and Regulations Committee when there are only two members on that committee. As Lynette was saying, one of the things during the discussion when it was full-fledged seven members, a lot of discussion, research, and um, vetting of any suggestion would be take, undertaken by those seven members before any decision could be made. There's not enough of resident participation on that committee to come forward with a viable recommendation to this board. I'm also concerned, if you remember when we tried to make, this is not just a vote by the few people. This is going to have to evolve a vote by the entire membership because it's a change in our bylaws. For instance, if there are 1,400 homes, 701 of those people are going to have to vote yes in order to train get this type of change. I would hate to have some kind of change made to our rules that would hamstring us in the future. This kind of vote takes hours, hundreds of hours, ultimately, and thousands, sometimes thousands of dollars to get something through. I don't want to see you wasting staff time, resident volunteer time, and association dollars to try to change something that doesn't need to be changed. Our next speaker is Judy Irving. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know I've talked a lot about see something, say something, many, many times. And I'm very sad to report 
that the auto break-ins are still occurring on our streets here in Four Seasons. As block captains, I'm going to ask you again to reiterate to the people on your block, don't be embarrassed. Call the police and report it. We have no evidence to show the police that we need extra patrols up and down our streets if people are embarrassed to report or to do a police report. We've had the second break-in on Bloomington Park. So somebody's watching our street, and they're watching yours, too. I have told all the people in my block, please do not leave anything of value. I understand you have to park your cars out on the driveway. And luckily enough, the second incident, all they got was kind of napkins and paper. Because my neighbor did what I asked. Take all of your clickers, any of your information, bring it in with you each time. Um, other than that, I think things are moving along well. We have new people in charge of the block captains, and I hope you'll give them your support. We are um, looking with new eyes about having more frequent meetings of our block captains. So that should be really a good thing. Anita will be speaking in just a little bit about uh, other items of safety. But I really want you to remember, if you see something, please have them say something. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Corbett. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Anderson. I'm the uh, chairperson of the Architectural Review Committee. And each month at this meeting, we ARC discusses the applications, the addendums, the amendments, and Exhibit Cs. This month, I'd like to uh, expand that uh, for the benefit of all of our new homeowners, which we have so many of them. New applications are initial Exhibit A's. Exhibit A's are the document that gets everything moving with the exterior changes of the home. As you can see in May, we had 10 new Exhibit A's and all were approved. Addendums and amendments are also Exhibit A's, but they are submitted after the initial plan and they are for changes or additions to the original plan. In May, we had 23 addendums and 19 of those were approved. Now, Exhibit B is the signed neighborhood notification statement. It must be fully completed and submitted with the original Exhibit A. It means that your neighbors are aware that work will be taking place. Exhibit C is the notice of completion. It is signed and dated by the homeowner, and pictures are submitted showing all the completed details. Once submitted, an ARC team member contacts the homeowner to set an appointment to verify the completed project. This is an important step as the visual inspection must match the Exhibit A and or the addendums. The ARC member has two choices at this time, to approve or disapprove. In May, 31 Exhibit C's were submitted, 27 of those were completed. Our team members are sometimes asked, what is the enforcement policy? Well, it is written in the architectural guidelines on page three. And it states, failure to obtain the necessary approval from ARC, or failure to complete the work in conformity with the plans approved by ARC, may constitute a violation of the CCNRs and may require modification or removal of any work at the owner's expense. Now, as for old business in May, our team created an article which we had published in the, uh, uh, the June breeze. And this was a composite of testimonials of why each of our ARC committee members enjoys being on the Architectural Review Committee. The purpose of this was to give insight as to what we do and encourage others to consider joining our ARC team. We discussed also in May a format for Exhibit C disapprovals. It would be in writing and it would clearly explain the disapproval. Thus, if it went to the board, our board members would have clear and valid reasons to back ARC's disapproval decision. In our May meeting, our committee voted to have Gary Stiglitz become our co-chairperson. And I'm pleased to say that Gary's sitting right over here. Welcome, Gary. Uh, Gary also presented at that meeting a uh, revised Exhibit G, and we're going to be doing a lot more work on that particular exhibit. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had further discussion at that meeting um, on uh, June 6th. Also, in, uh, also, Carol T. has attended three ARC meetings and was interviewed today by myself, Gary, and Len. The ARC committee would like to request that Carol T. be approved as our newest ARC member. Board? I make a motion that we approve the membership of uh, Carol T. to the Architectural Review Committee. Thank you. So moved and seconded to appoint uh, Carol T to the Architectural <coughs> Review Committee. All in favor? Aye. Carrie? Thank, thank you, Board. Thanks, Brian. Uh, my last point is uh, we still have one opening for somebody to join our committee. I would encourage all homeowners to read the, the June Breeze report. All of our members have written about what they enjoy most about being on the ARC team. We know that there are many other homeowners out there. Uh, that would enjoy the challenge and the opportunity um, to serve our wonderful community. Our next meeting is Wednesday, June 21st at 8.30 a.m. in the RCN boardroom. And we thank you very much. Um, any questions, board members? Thank you. Hello. I'm Martha Baumgarten, I'm 
chair of the communications committee. Um, you get me twice today, sorry about that guys. Uh, I want to speak first to the Breeze Editorial Board. Um, the chair is Lori Larson and I am speaking on behalf of both groups today. They continue their fine work with the Breeze. The Breeze has never been look, looking better. Just, uh, it look, it's a beautiful, beautiful publication. Um, they, that group will also be testing their new webpage on um, the new website in the coming weeks, which is a very exciting step forward for them. Uh, one quick note about the timing of the Breeze proofing meeting. The slide says the 10th, but obviously the 10th is on a Saturday, and you know we still have our habits of not working on the weekends, right? But um, the, the actual structure is it's the 10th, for the first working day thereafter. So the good news is that gives everyone a great opportunity to come see the group do its work this coming Monday at 10 a.m. in Rec Center Room 3, Rec Center North Room 3. And I truly recommend to everyone that you attend a business meeting of the Breeze Editorial Board or a proofing meeting to understand the work performed and how passionate that group is about delivering a great product on time every single month. Um, the Communications Committee reports the following. Our team is performing preliminary testing on our new website. Once they complete that work, pages are being sent out to various groups for their testing and content modifications. This will be an ongoing process as each page is completed. We have had a little bit of a speed bump involving the need to restructure our uh, nine years worth, soon to be 10 years worth of files that are presently archived on the back end of our website. Now I know I'm getting into some little technical jargon for you. But let's just uh, say that if you took all the file cabinets out of business and dumped out 10 years worth of files and had to reorganize them all, think about that in, in the context of all the files you have on your computer. It's, it's a big job. So um, it's progressing, and pages will con be, continue to be sent to each group, committee, and club affected. Expect this work to continue over the coming months, and if you're asked to test or provide feedback, we strongly encourage you to take that opportunity. Our web guru, Larry Berkman, is looking for out-of-box solutions that will give us more flexibility than the standard host software actually affords us, and I think we'll be excited about some of the neat enhancements. Um, let me just throw a word out there, maps, community maps. He's working on some great solutions to make those much more effective and accessible for everybody. So we continue to look for qualified web administrators, writers, photographers, educators, even someone with library experience. These are all assets that our committee could use to help expedite this work. So please contact me if you have any interest in that or a background that might be a good fit for the work that we're doing right now. We meet at 11 a.m. the first Wednesday of the month in RCN, room three. And this is immediately after the Breeze editorial board meeting at 10 o'clock. So if you come at 10 and stay till 12, you will really get a great double letter. If you're here today and not currently receiving the AM report, please grab me after the meeting and we'll get you signed up. Because uh, you really should be getting that. the best way to know what's going on. As Len says, what happened yesterday, what's happening today, and what's on tap for tomorrow. That's, uh, that's the place to go for that. As always, many thanks to our board of directors and first service residential for all the continued support. Thank you. CPT? No, right. Oh, okay, emergency preparedness? Hello, everybody. I'm, can you hear me? I'm Alvin Blair, I'm the chairperson for the Emergency Preparedness Committee. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, first aid workshop we had on June 2nd. It was, uh, I'd give it probably an A+. Uh, San Sandra Samples, uh, who's a current nurse and a former emergency uh, nurse, gave it a fantastic uh, presentation. Uh, unfortunately, it was very comprehensive. Uh, I mean, that's not unfortunate, but it was very comprehensive and very detailed. But uh, we had a meeting afterwards, and we decided to uh, to cut some items out. Uh, we didn't have much time to do a on-hands workshop, but uh, in the upcoming uh, first aid workshops, we'll be able to do that. Uh, we also had decided that instead of having it in the daytime, we'll have it in the evening, so the people that are uh, work in the day will be able to attend. So, um, we're, uh, we're going to be having a 
next week we're going to have a first aid committee work, uh, meeting where we're going to talk about future events and how often we're going to have them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think a lot of people missed out. There was only 10 attendees, uh, and the rest were committee members. Uh, but it was a very, very good uh, first aid workshop. Uh, future events that we're going to have, uh, besides additional first aid workshops, we're going to have CPR and AED training. Uh, we have uh, two uh, people on staff that are trained to give certifications on first aid or in CPR, not excuse me, CPR and AEDs, but you know, we won't be giving out the certificates, but we will present the um, training. Also, we're going to be having additional emergency preparedness training where we'll talk about how you prepare in your home, what you need to do, what you need, what kind of food, water, and supplies that you need to, to uh, stock. Uh, we'll also have, and this is for the board and also for my committee, uh, ICS, SEMS, and IMS training, which is Incident Command System, the Standard uh, Emergency Management System, and National Information Management System. We'll have that training. Normally it's given Riverside County through the Emergency Management Department, but uh, it seems like most people can't attend that, so we're going to have them bring it here, and I'm going to ask uh, not only the board to attend, but also my committee. Uh, my committee, although they're very passionate, they're uh, not very experienced, and so we need to get them trained. I don't have the time to train them individually, but uh, we'll get them trained. Um, in addition to that, we're going to have CERT training, which is going to be September 15th, 16th, and 17th. So if any of you uh, want to attend CERT, uh, it's going to be here at Four Seasons. We're going to have it at uh, Rec Center North. and. Uh, I, I would encourage everybody to go there. Uh, one of the things that I had uh, seen is that I had mentioned to everybody that everybody needs to be prepared for three weeks. And I said, you need to do it for yourself, you need to do it for your family. But what I neglected to say was that your pets are our family too. And you need, there's a special, they require special circumstances and special, and special uh, preparation. We have a checklist for that, and that will be on the uh, Four Seasons website soon. Uh, get with Mark and, and see how we do that. Um, strategies. In January, uh, that's probably when I, that's when I took over. And at that time, it was just myself, and we didn't have any additional committee members. Uh, since then, we have built up to a total of seven committee members. They're all passionate. Uh, the survivability of our community, but they don't have any experience. Since then, they have gained some experience, and we'll be, uh, they all have uh, assignments such as a sense of responsibility. Uh, we still have to train them, but, and we'll get to that pretty soon. Uh, fortunately, we have the HOA board. They have uh, partnered with us in trying to get us up to speed. And they have uh, given uh, Fred Weck as, uh, to assist me in putting all of our uh, action plans uh, up to have update all our action plans. And uh, uh, Fred's you know, very knowledgeable in that. Um, so once uh, Fred and I evaluate the action plans, uh, we'll pass it on to the cognizant uh, response team leaders and they'll go ahead and uh, film the verbiage. Um, ICS, I'll, I'll probably pass that right now. Uh, the ICS is Incident Command System, which is what we employ during an emergency. We have an incident commander, and then we have tiers of responsibility. You know, one is, uh, after the incident commander, we have the officers, we have the chiefs, and then we have the team leaders. And uh, I'll talk about that at, at another time. So that's probably all I have. Thank you very much.
Uh, this morning, the cement was poured on the bunch of boards, and I spoke to the contractor, and he said that the cement will be allowed to cure over the weekend, and the boards should be available next week because they plan to install the bumpers and the uh, the grass on the courts. Once the uh, the bunch of courts are totally completed, we will resume work on the horseshoe courts so that so that they can be completed and ready for use. The lodge and rock iron fencing is still awaiting scheduling. There was appointed a an ad hoc sports committee. I think let's see. That slide is not up there. But the sports committee was appointed to help us make better use of our court facilities. The first organizational meeting was held by Randy, and he, he has a completely built committee now. The second meeting will be tomorrow, Friday, and I believe it's at 10 a.m., but he said he'd send out additional announcements on that. Our UV light and operating systems of pools are still being investigated or are still under discussion, as well as the uh, gazebos. The facilities committee, the lodge committee, and the safety committee are currently working on a statement of responsibility so that each committee will know the major areas for which they are responsible. And we hope to eliminate some uh, major overlapping responsibilities. The facilities committee meets the third Tuesday of the month at 8.30 a.m. in the RCN room. We welcome all the visitors and guests whether you want to compliment us or criticize us or make suggestions to the committee, you're always welcome. And we are looking for additional committee members. So if any of you are interested in that, please stop by and let us know what you think and share your thoughts. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Ayala, co-chair of the Finance Committee. Um, April financials that the uh, Finance Committee reviewed at our previous meeting, as you can see uh, on the screen. Income, uh, just over 1.4 million. Expenses, uh, just over 1.3. Net surplus, 79,513. Uh, nothing, no surprises there, pretty routine. Uh, relative to our budget, we're pretty much on track, so uh, and again, as we talked about before, the, the biggest component of our revenue, of course, is assessments. And as, as you know, we're very fortunate in this community that uh, virtually everyone makes their assessments on time. So that, that just makes a, a, a huge difference in, in making sure that we're on track with our budget. Uh, just a, a few other things that I want to touch on. Uh, the the, the two-year budget projection uh, updated on-site reserve study and the 2018 budget. Uh, we have reported previously that the Finance Committee, obviously, we, we focus uh, primarily on the current year budget to see where our revenue expenditures are relative to the budget. But we think it's very important that, that we keep an eye to the future, especially as this community is going to be built out over the next two years, roughly, within the next two years. Uh, how does that affect us? Uh, once we know that our, our assessment revenue is going to hit a certain level and not keep growing because of new, uh, new homes being built, how does that look compared to our, our cost trends? So one thing that we have done, as we reported previously, and we're going to be looking at the first draft of it as we've asked Jerry and Lupo, uh, to prepare a two-year uh, projection. So in other words, take a look at the current year budget, but also based on what we know today, based on projections for revenue, cost trends, and so on, how do we look for the next two years? So we're going to be looking at a three-year uh, budget projection, current year plus the next two. So we'll be looking at that, uh, the first draft of that, at our next finance committee meeting. This is going to be an ongoing process for us. This is the first draft, as I say. Uh, but we will be updating that. The idea is to update it every six months. So every six months from now, we're going to know things in six months that we didn't know today in terms of revenue and expenses. So the idea is just to have this ongoing look to the future to make sure that we remain financially healthy. We are very healthy right now. We want to keep it that way. Uh, Related to that is, in the next few days, the uh, work will begin from our outside uh, contractor to begin work on the updating our reserve study. Again, a very important component of our budget because, as you know, uh, we need to make sure that we have sufficient funding set aside uh, to maintain all our facilities at, at the wonderful condition that they are. As things wear out and can be replaced, we 
we need to make sure that we have funding set aside to keep everything up to date and current so that it doesn't impact our current through operations and we have funding reserves set aside. So this study helps us to see exactly how it looks for the next year and for the next few years and to make sure that the funding that we set out and set aside every month is adequate. Um, we are going, we've had discussions in the finance committee about the budget process. Uh, and again, once we get this two-year uh, projection, the first draft of that, that's going to really help us because every month uh, we get in the finance committee uh, expenditure proposals from various uh, committees, and they're all very worthwhile expenditures. I mean, things that uh, that need to be done, uh, whether it's uh, updating uh, pooled equipment, whether it's uh, uh, the retrofitting of the lighting, uh, the audio equipment, and so on for it, uh, for the ballroom. These are all costly items, but again, very important items. We want to keep our facilities uh, state of the art, but at the same time, we want to make sure do we have the funding to accommodate all these things. So this is all part of the budget process for next year. We want to have discussions with the finance committee as we build a budget for next year. Is there any way that we can uh, try to get various committees to give us a hand? What do you anticipate this next year? What do you see coming in? Because what happens basically at our finance committee meeting we get budget for, uh, proposals for expenditures that really aren't in the budget. These are above and beyond the current year budget. And uh, we're very fortunate that physically, financially, we're able to handle those expenditures. But we don't want to get to the point where we get a very worthwhile expenditure coming in and we're looking at it and saying, well, you know what? Our revenue or our cash balances can make it very difficult for us to, to uh, recommend these expenditures to the board. We're not at that point right now, thank goodness. As I say, we're very fiscally sound. Uh, but we want to just keep an eye on the future and try to simplify that process, uh, have better communication with, Colt, with, with the other, other committees for future expenditures, and uh, basically it's all with an eye to the future. So that's, that's all I have for now. Any questions? Oh, okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Vince Conway. I'm the chair of the Landscape Committee, and we have been very, very busy this last month. I'd like to start off by thanking Jerry, uh, Fred Wegg, Jeff, uh, Jordan for all of their help and time and efforts to make a lot of this happen. Uh, first thing is, for those of you who maybe don't know, Brad Holmes, a contractor, landscape contractor for many years here, retired at the end of May, and we have been very busy. Uh, appointing new contractors to cover all of the areas that are out here in our community. Again, thank you, Jerry, for a lot of work putting together uh, all of the bids so that we had a chance to look them all over. Uh, we've contracted with two new landscapers, Artistic uh, Landscape and Park West Landscape. So what we've done is all of the areas uh, that are uh, under the Landscape Committee, they have been walked by committee members to assure compliance or we switched over to those contractors. All existing contracts and bids have been completed from the um, from Brad and O'Connell and the old areas that they took care of before again the new contractors took over. Uh, all HOA landscape areas have been assigned to a committee member like we talked about last month so that they do monthly examinations and reports will be presented at our monthly meetings on all of the landscape areas that are now uh, under the HOA. A new fuel mod area was is going to be turned over from the builder in Phase D, all of the fuel mods on the outside of Phase D, as well as the slope on Highland Springs and the sidewalk south of Breckenridge is now under uh, HOA, or will be soon. The Big Horn fuel mod was planted finally after many months with my core, and uh, hopefully that's going to take over and uh, do well up there. Also, we did uh, Vincent Creek Crest and Whitney Peak. Any of you live in that area? Uh, we planted 125 five gallon rock rose plants in that area. Uh, the D7, which we call the D7 slope behind the Royal, which is facing the new construction that has been weeded, debris has been cleaned up, and the missing plants have been replaced. And also last, the Edison easement deer grass that was growing in front of the sprinklers and stopping the water from watering the plants and running down and making ruts in that walkway. Uh, the deer grass has been removed from the front sprinklers and the runoff, runoff ruts 
have been filled and the walkway has been smoothed out. So like I say, we had a, we've had a lot to do. Uh, we're going to have our first change meeting date, Tuesday the 20th. We changed it to the third Tuesday of the month. It's going to be on Tuesday, June 20th at 10 p.m. in the RCN conference room. If anybody would like to be there, um, let us know. I'm sorry, one, uh, 1 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. 1 o'clock in the RCN conference room. Thank you very much. never dull with the watch team. The trust issues that you can see are on the way of being completed and I think everyone will be as happy as I will be to get our room back. Uh, as soon as that happens, then the flooring will be started and we want to uh, really thank Terry Fears for the wonderful job he did making us a sample board that I hope everyone has looked at out in the, uh, in the lobby. Uh, after the flooring and the built the bistro and the ballroom are completed, then we'll start on the rest of the lodge rooms and the hallways. Samples of these will also be displayed in the lobby. Discussion has begun with the remodel of the current arts, crafts, and ceramics room. So many ideas have come and so many ideas have gone. I think we have come to one that we like. And the next phase will be to go to all the heads of all the groups that use the room and get their input from all the people that actually work and, and uh, do all the creativity in the room. Then we will take that idea and go forth with it to the board. As Lou has said, lodge safety and facilities are very, very in intertwined. And uh, it, that's a good thing. We really like going to each other's meetings. We find that we do a lot of things that are along the same basis. But in the past, all three of us have been working on the same thing, which has caused confusion and a lot of time uh, that has been spent. So we're going to try to fine tune each of, um, each of our duties and our areas. Jerry Lupo said it best. Couldn't quote you. She said, All the building outside will be facilities. Turn the building over and let all the stuff shake out. That's the lodge. We get all the shake out from all the rooms. And then safety would be risk management, dealing with all the safety. So I think we've got an idea of how we're going to divide this up. Uh, we will still have a member attend each of the meetings because we find that's very, very beneficial. And like I say, it will stop us all from going and doing the same thing. Uh, one major announcement, Kid Flip start this Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, we changed it from Friday to Saturday because I don't want to interrupt the Downton Abbey folks. And also, um, we find, you know, I've noticed more kids still come Saturday and Sunday. We will have cartoons, we'll have some adolescent films, and I think it'll be something for everyone. And yes, popcorn will be made for that movie. <laughs> the way I see it, we're going to have your whole day spent. We start with the movie, move on to Smitty's for lunch, and then hit the pool. The day is almost over. Um, our, our committee has seven members. And finally, um, they have all come forth with, with various areas of, of our committee um, that our committee takes care of. So I have written all the job descriptions and given them to the board. And uh, that takes a major relief off me. Everybody has something they want to do. Mine is only to oversee it. That sounds good. Lodge committee meets the fourth Wednesday of every month. Our next meeting is June 28th. And like I say, we have seven members, but we could use more. And all the time, I keep getting a little bit more stuff thrown my way from shaking out that building. So come and see us. Thanks. Any questions? Hi, I'm Sherry Howard with the Rules and Rec Committee. And I'd like to report, uh, we have chosen Barbara Morton for our co-chair. And I'd like to let the board know the job descriptions are done and printed out, but I was handed the wrong envelope, so we're up front at the office right now. Um, we did 
have Barbara Miller attend the ad hoc sports use of radical rules uh, committee. Let's see. And we did these uh, discussing uh, the tennis courts on the third rec center. We brainstormed, um, you know, for tournaments. Um, we just figure if they wanted tournaments right now, um, they would just apply at the management and they'd be given a form, you know, with their rules on it. And if the need comes up, we'll address it at a later time if they need to change it. And it's also on our agenda to continue to work on updating the CCNRs and bylaws. We'll be resuming that shortly. Our next meeting will be Tuesday at 9. Now, I do want to let you know we do have five members. We are looking for a couple more, so if anybody is interested, I do invite them to come join us. Thank you.
So, a coming article in Breeze Land of Safety, we'll be talking about the AEDs, and we'll be working with um, after it on so far as any training that he wants to do with that. So look at your article in the breeze coming up in July. We have a lot about that. We have a subcommittee working on placement of the AEDs. And because our next uh, meeting actually would be on the 4th of July, and I know you guys will not be here, including me, but um, we have moved it to Thursday, the 6th of July, 10 o'clock in the morning. Anyone that has any ideas about safety, Please see us, please see myself, Donna, um, Jeff Wilson, anyone that's on the committee and how really, really helpful and he, he's, I, just can't, I can't even express the words for Jerry Monahan. He has been just absolutely tremendous help and we thank you so very much. Thank you. And here's yeah. I take it back. It's on page 49 under the committee report for the board's consideration. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, that's okay. Okay. I'll make a motion that uh, the board approve the further investigation and research uh, for crosswalks in our community. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hey, uh, the one thing I, I would ask Anita is, is you uh, go to the finance committee and uh, let them know what, what you're looking at in terms of cost. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Thank you very, very much for that. And I did jump over the security cameras and we're still working on that. So thank you, board. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marion Heron, co-chair of the Social Committee. I'd like to tell you that our fashion show date has been signed. It will be October the 28th. We're also going to do a call for models. This will take place on Saturday, the 5th of August at 10 a.m. in the Rec Centre North Building. By hosting this on a Saturday, we hope to attract both our retired guests and our poor people who are still working. What we're looking for is models of all shapes and sizes, no hard physical activity necessary, I promise. All we ask for is for a fun-loving, outgoing personality. So come on ladies, join us and stretch your stuff. We've also hoped the board will approve Linda Cunningham as a new committee member. She's been attending our meetings since January. She will be actually hosting and chairing the fashion show. So, board, can we approve her? Uh, that would be Pam. I make a motion that we approve Pam as the chairman of the... Linda Cunningham as a committee member. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to read it. Yes. <laughs> I make a motion to uh, approve uh, Linda Cunningham. Thank you. I second. I move and second it to appoint uh, Linda Cunningham to the social committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's great. That'll make our committee now up to seven members. Our calendar for 2018, we've been working with Cindy, who helps us through most of our tricky situations. We have had provisional dates booked and some events assigned. However, before we conclude our calendar, you will be getting the survey on week. This is again your opportunity to tell us what you would like. So please, even if there's just one thing that you've always wanted to do, look at the form, tick the yes or no box, come with any other comments that you have, and we'll try to see if we can incorporate whatever it is that you want into next year's calendar. I can never promise, but if you don't ask, you won't get. Our next meeting is um, Thursday, the 6th of July, and it will be at 5 p.m. in the RCM building. Thank you all. Have a great day. Okay. Let me just go back to uh, being the safety chair and talk about uh, speeding 
I just want to let you know, as chair and as community ambassador, because we are in this community as well, I picked up a number of the California Drivers Handbook. So anyone that needs it, um, please see me. <laughs> on the Gateway San Borgonia Crossing, where, which is the warehouse proposed there in Cherry Valley. A number of you actually wrote letters concerning this warehouse, um, proposed warehouse, placement right off of Cherry Valley Boulevard as you come up, then you would make the left turn and then all that open space is there. So even talking to truckers, um, they're saying, wow, by the time you go up that incline, then they have to come down, there it could be placed somewhere else. One of the things about this also is that is for residential um, planning and they, uh, what the proposed buyer and plants are is that they want to do some spot zoning, which would um, just change it automatically into commercial. So what has happened, because there were over 800 letters that were sent just from the different communities with Solera, Sun Lakes, the Cherry Valley, whatever, the, um, they had to respond back to it by a certain time. Uh, they could not do that, so what has happened is that all of you that actually wrote a letter should have gotten this Riverside County Planning Department letter and actually, there's a new revised EIR, which is an environment impact report that has come out. And so what we need and ask for you to do is to look at that letter and then just rewrite your letter, whatever letter you wrote. We will be working with that group concerning that. So the new proposal is that um, basically, if you forget to do it, they made some little changes, but they still want to put the warehouse right there. And there is a lot of industrial area off the 60 and that burned out in Island Springs and some other areas. This particular warehouse is not in the city of Beaumont, so we would not be getting the taxes from it, but we would be getting impact from it. The Lowland and the Highland Springs uh, presentation, we ask all of you to come, and that is next Wednesday, June the 14th, here. Uh, please come out and support them. We had the San G, San Borgonio uh, Hospital here, as well as Beaver and Kaiser. They're a little nervous that because we've done that, they think people are burning out and will not come. So just please just come, whether you are a patient or not, but come and support it because also that's a business right across the street from us. They will have the vice president for Long Linda there and some other doctors, and um, the pharmacists, the head pharmacists, and uh, they're going to be giving away some really good prices. So if you just want to come with the price, it's great. So three new businesses that are opening up in the Albertson Shopping Center across the street, Chipotle, T-Mobile, and Sleep Train. So if you need a mattress, go over there. No, go across the street. So it's <laughs> but uh, Chipotle is coming, and from what I understand, that Penelope Bread has passed all of the requirements. So they should be breaking bread, uh, breaking baby bread. Um, not too long from now, and that's right uh, behind the, where that empty coals area. And there's also some other businesses that are pretty in. So that area is going to be changed. Um, the city planning committee meeting will be on June the 21st. Um, at the Beaumont City Hall. So thank you very much for the board and um, Nelly, uh, whoever handles the morning report, AM report, for putting that on. Thank you, Nelly. So all the information will be there, and that basically is that what, do you, what would you like to see in this area of Beaumont? What are your plans? And so they're asking all of the residents to come, if not, please just send them a note and see Tom Happy because he is on that as well. On um, June the 22nd uh, at the Beaumont City Hall, there will be a job.
job fair. It is open to everyone. If you know of anyone that would like to have a job, then tell them to come to the job fair. It's 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Beaumont City Hall, and that is basically will be an auditorium. If you know anyone that actually um, is not ready to be hired, then just tell them to come and find out what qualifications are there. There are quite a few big companies that will be there, so pass the word, and that's it for right now. Remember, I have these one. Hey, I want to go back to landscape planning. We did not um, review the revised charter, so I would like the board to take a look at page 41. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the uh, revised charter. Uh, Vince, I have a question. You, you say uh, that members have to be present for the regularly scheduled landscape walks. Wouldn't participate be more pertinent than present? That might be a better word, yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, page 57. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, review and act upon club and group application requests. If you go to page 57, this is the request for the four seasons, Tales and Trails group. Okay. Ask, oh, okay. I ask a question. What is the difference between this and the current golf committee? Or, or, what's the difference? between what they're going to do and what the current dog committee does. Would you like to hear from Martha regarding yes. the difference? Yes. I'm glad you asked. There are more tailed animals in here than just dogs. And currently the dog owner group is focused on dogs. Uh, and uh, that group is focused in large part on infrastructure, rules, uh, some events, the pack walks, the uh, potential fenced off-leash area. This other group will handle all animals. All animals, uh, all types of animals get lost. All types of animals get found. All types of people and animals occasionally find themselves in very dire circumstances as the case that I described earlier. This is going on now, all around us. So the fact that we're looking at all animals and helping people make provision for all of their pets is a huge difference. And this also will be more of a service organization rather than an interest group. Does that cover it? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept the application for the group Four Seasons Tales and Trails. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to accept uh, a group for seasons, tales, and trails. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, our next item on the agenda is to approve any facility use applications. At the time of the board packet preparation, there weren't any. However, we did receive two in between last week and today. The first one is from Stefan Eust, and Cindy, you'll have to clarify, you did put, put um, a number of dates down. Is it every single one of those dates is the interest, or any of those that are become available? Any of those that become available. Okay. All right, so I have a facility use application from Stefan Eust for a planning meeting, and they listed a number of dates depending on the availability due to our repairs. Uh, it's for 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for approximately 50 to 150 uh, in attendance. Uh, it's, tell me something about the group. Cindy, can you get okay. it? It's a private event. Yes, it is evidently a citizen church planning uh, meeting. So they have folks, they're trying to, right now it's a satellite church that they're trying to plan on having a regular facility and all that so they're doing planning meetings and that's what they told me but they're doing planning meetings 
Is, is it a religious group or? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's a religious group that's actually having planning meetings so they can get in church someday. Yeah. I make a motion. We approve the request. Seconded. Been moved and seconded to approve the. What's the name of the group? It's for a homeowner to reserve the ballroom. It's a private event for the staff to use. Okay. They're part of that. The ballroom. Okay, for the homeowner uh, to have this group meeting. In favor? Aye. Motion right. passes. Okay, the second application is a special approval from the BACE neighborhood. This is the Belterra Arroyo Coronado Edgebrook group that wanted to have a block party for the July. And they did submit uh, the application for July 4th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., approximately 150 people. The event will be held on the streets of Belterra and Arroyo. I make a motion we approve their, the uh, base uh, uh, 4th of July party on July 4th beginning at 5 p.m. It's been moved and seconded uh, to approve the Belterra 4th of July block party. All in favor? Aye. 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 carries. Not working? No. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next item on the agenda is our activities director report. Okay, better set that timer. <laughs> All right, so first thing, 4th of July, everybody's asking, are we looking for 4th of July? Are we looking for 4th of July? Um, I am moving forward with a proposal to the board that they're going to be looking at for going ahead. I know that so many of you clubs and classes uh, love doing all the in-house club competitions and are anxiously waiting their trophies this year. And I've had people say, well, we'll go to the amphitheater, we'll go to the Lojo, we'll go wherever it takes, let's just empty out the lodge front and we'll do our ceremony there, how about that, right? So we usually, as you know, have around 400 people or more that have giant uh, open house almost, you know, we have our big community potluck thing. Um, we have generally our um, awards ceremony for all the in-house club competitions that go on. And we generally have a show. Well, it's been really, really brutal trying to plan this with the constant date changes and not knowing exactly how ripped up we're going to be here in the ballroom. So you'll hear some more details about that. We will wait and see if we can trap whether the board approves our 4th of July or not. Uh, so that to be determined. But I, th I think probably we'll get something just to say. Um, all right, then regarding club and class events, the Amphitheater Concert Series. Yay! Do we all love that? We so do. Everyone loved the band uh, that the Amphitheater Concert uh, Production Group put together. Thank you, Mark, for negotiating. What a mean negotiator that guy is. And they got Gabby by Nature, that really cool group that we had, uh, for such a deal. And we all had a good time with that. Guess what? We had record attendance at that. So far, our very first concert, 295 people were counted in both the amphitheater area and in the pool parties that come and then listen to the concert so they don't have to do the lawn and lunch seating thing, um, which is totally neat. All right, once again, you're going to be hearing me say this, maybe, maybe until we start seeing people being good neighbors. How about that? We have been pleading with people to please wait until 11 o'clock on the day of the concert series, uh, right, on the concert, because of a couple things. We have people who are pulling cables, if you haven't heard my, my plea, who are pulling cables, that's our techie guys, setting up the speakers and all that, getting ready to do a town to sound check, and we don't want anyone being right in the way with that, with their chairs everywhere. Um, so please respect that. And the other thing is that um, occasionally I have weddings on Saturday. So if you guys plant your chairs on a Saturday, 
then they will become the first wedding gifts that these <laughs>
First item on the agenda is the 2016 annual <laughs> audit report. I'd like to make a motion to approve and mail to the homeowners the 2016 annual audit report. A second. Move and second up to approve the 2016 annual audit report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass. Line pages 197 to 199 is a proposal from the Landscape Committee to install carpet roses at the corner of Belterra and Four Seasons Circle. Make a recommendation that we approve the proposal to plant the carpet rows at the corner of uh, Belterra at Four Seeds Circle. I'll second that. The move and second it to uh, plant uh, the red rose carpet at uh, the corners of uh, Belterra and the Four Seeds Circle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. On page 200 is the recommendation to accept the common area in the remainder of the common area in track 33096-5. The Landscape Committee did an initial walk. They did a reinspection, and it is ready to be accepted effective uh, retros June 1st. Make a recommendation that we approve the acceptance of track 33096-5 common area as expected by the Landscape Committee. I'm second. The move of second up to accept uh, track 33096 5 common area. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. On pages 201 to 206 is a proposal from the Lodge Committee ballroom equipment upgrade. I'd like to make the motion that we accept that with the exception of the acoustic word. And, and hold that until we have a chance to do the acoustic work, acoustic testing in the RCM building, which is 23,500. So it would be everything with the exception of the acoustic treatment. Seconded that we accept the ballroom equipment upgrade uh, minus the acoustical treatment panels at this time. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Carries. On page 207 is a recommendation from the Rules and Regulations Committee regarding uh, adopting uh, board term limits. Uh, before we proceed on this, uh, I'd like to have a little discussion. Um, I, I think uh, there's something we need to understand. We encourage the committees to do surveys, find out how things are going. Doing the surveys is a bit of an art and a bit of science. It's not as simple as just asking a question. In the survey world, there's something known as the ice cream survey, which is, who wants ice cream? Hey, we all want ice cream. Okay. One scoop's five dollars, two scoops are ten dollars. Ooh, I don't want ice cream. Well, when you ask people if you want to have term limits, and you have 350 say, or, yeah, 350 say, yeah, we want term limits. And then you go out and you look at our last election. We have one seat up. We have an incumbent, Jerry, honey. And wildly popular as Jerry is, <laughs> Zero people put their name on the hat to run against him. Uh, you know, if nobody is going to run and you're going to term limit the elected members, you're kind of not looking at the cost of what it is to have term limits for elected officials. So I think if we really want to have a good survey, we need to go back and explain to the people who fill out the survey that you have to be willing to serve or know someone who's willing to serve because, as was pointed out earlier tonight, uh, we're going to have seven seats before long. In fact, next April, there are four seats uh, up for election. So I think before the board takes any action along those lines, we have to have some research behind that. What have other communities done? 
in terms of term limits for elected officials and how well, how successful has that been? And uh, how many people do we uh, have waiting in the wings who are willing to serve? And possibly a decent explanation of the, the uh, requirement to spend 100 to 150 hours a month doing board business. Uh, personally, I, I, you know, I'm going to uh, not serve forever. Uh, two terms is all I'm ever going to serve if re-elected. I think most of us on this board right now are going to self term limits without the need to enshrine it in our uh, bylaws and, and CCNRs. So I would recommend that, that we set this back to the rules and rights for further review. And I ask the other board's opinions. Well, yeah, I, I agree with the, the concept, the idea, the, the ideology, so to speak, of term limits for board members. But I'm here to tell you, I think what Ben says is probably true, and the estimate of 150 man hours a month, maybe on the low side, uh, it's going to be tough to find people to serve. It's a very thankless job. You walk through the lot, you get accosted by people, you get called at home, you get called at names. It's, it's a very thankless job. So I think that and there's people in the audience that have been through this, and certainly people up here that have been through this. Uh, so I don't know if we're at the point yet where we have enough uh, oomph, enough justification. I, I know myself, I plan on serving one term and then, you know, going to pack a big hospital to spend the rest of the time. Might be easier, huh? Yeah, it would be Yeah, I believe in term limits uh, uh, too, but I think uh, Lynn is right. Uh, we should at least clarify uh, what the term limit's going to be and whether or not there are people that are, are willing to come forward and run. Uh, next year, as he said, four people going up for election, and as Jackie mentioned earlier, there's going to be seven homeowner board members if things stay where they are when we go to build out. So we're not even going to have five of us here that may or may not be available, but we're going to need seven. So I'd like to see it go back to the board. Um, my feeling is, I think term limits are great, but I'd like to see something here that says, if we have no one that is going to take over, then what do we do? And I don't see a plan, because what happens if none of us want to run and there's nobody else to run? What do we do then? I'd like to see a plan. What do we need to do? The direction is, from what I understand, the direction is to send us back to rules and rights yes. for reconsideration and further study. Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is on page 208, and this is the 4th of July community event as proposed by the activities director. Oh, Cindy, you're so adorable. Yeah. She is. You ready for I'm such a rocker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, I'll, I'll make the motion to approve not to exceed $3,320 for the 4th of July celebration. So, uh, Cindy and Don, you can put on the the great celebration. I'll second. All in favor of Cindy's party? Uh, <laughs> 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 No further business to discuss. The next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, July 13th, 1 p.m., hopefully here in the ballroom. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. See you all.